I've been really fortunate to be able to work with a lot of really successful and famous artists. So a lot of young musicians write me on Instagram or ask me after shows about what steps I took to arrive at sort of having a music career, a career as a musician. The year was 2003 and I was 23 years old, fresh out of Berkeley. I was broke, I had no plan, I didn't know what I was gonna do with myself. I was thinking, should I move to New York? Should I move to LA? Should I practice eight hours a day? Should I, what should I do with myself? Well, the first thing I had to do with myself is to start making some money because I had to move into an apartment with a roommate and pay rent. So, I decided to join a wedding band. In this wedding band, there were guys who were in their late 40s and early 50s who had by that point played with some of the most famous artists in the world and toured a lot, but they decided to settle down and have families, so they now play with wedding bands and had teaching positions. This wedding band was gonna be one of the most difficult gigs I've ever had to do in my life. We were mostly playing songs from the 70s and those musicians, and the wedding band, for them, those 70s songs were literally sacred because those were the songs of their youth. So they took those 70s songs very, very seriously. And when I joined, I was the youngest member of the band and I was going to get no discounts from these guys. Oh yeah, baby, it was tough love. Those guys in the band were giving me so much crap for literally everything. I wasn't playing with the right feel. I wasn't covering all the parts. I wasn't accompanying them in the right way. I wasn't doing anything right. God damn it. <laughs> and I knew I had to stay in this band. And I also knew that if I took their criticism seriously, I would most likely benefit at the end. Now, back in those days, I only had one little keyboard, my Triton LE. So right there, I couldn't have covered all the parts of the songs because it had like a Rhodes part and a strings part and a horns part. And all I had was one keyboard. So I had to learn how to split that keyboard in three ways or split it in four ways to have different sounds playing at the same time. So I had a preset for every single song just to be able to play all of those parts because I simply couldn't afford to buy another keyboard. I took this freaking wedding gig so seriously, you wouldn't believe it. Before long, I knew every little part to every song, every string line, every horn line, every clavinet lick, every little nuke and cranny of those awesome 70s tunes. And you know what happened? Well, a few things happened. Number one, those guys started giving each other funny looks during the gigs. Like, whoa, this mother is really stepping up to the plate, huh? And I could see the smirks on their faces during the songs. Their hearts began to melt. They started telling me a lot about the music and teaching me and showing me things. They opened up to me because they could see I was very serious. Another thing that happened was that I became the most in-demand guy in town. Let's face it, even though it was just weddings, casuals, and bars. Everyone likes to play with a guy who takes the music seriously, no matter where, no matter on what level. So my workload tripled over the course of a few months. But here's the kicker, and here's why I'm telling you this story. When I moved to LA and started playing big pop gigs, I very quickly realized but I'll probably never have to work as hard for any of these big pop gigs as I had to work for that little wedding band. I quickly discovered that all that was required of me to do playing stadiums, theaters and arenas was about 40% of the effort that I had put into that wedding band. And I had then realized the real gift those guys gave me during those formative years. It was like a boot camp. And it is only when I moved to LA that I realized how grateful I was for having those guys push me in that right direction. Point being, if you want a career in music, 
take your little gigs very, very seriously. Whatever preparation you need, you're gonna get. And whoever needs to see it is watching. By the way, it was off of that same Boston scene that I got my first big touring gig in 2005. And things sort of snowballed from there. Take your little gigs very seriously. Do the absolute best job you can. One way or another, it's going to come back around. You reap what you saw, so saw generously. So that's just one story. There's a lot more, and I'm gonna be sharing them with you in future vlogs. Now, how about you guys? What are some of your stories? What do you think are some of the most important things to keep in mind if you wanna have a good career in the music industry? Please share your thoughts down below in the comments. Thanks for checking out my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.